Hi, I'm uh, We are back again here on Fifi Manfred on YouTube. I mean, all the content, the home of everything, all the updates. Oh, I see. Oh, I see. Any just on Fifi Manfred on YouTube. Inti, say Afin Wajenia. Thank you very much for choosing us. And I always say this. Thank you very much for choosing us. Um, this is Fifi Manfred on YouTube. It's same and everywhere. Fifi Manfred. Fifi underscore Manfred on Twitter. Fifi Manfred on Facebook. Fifi Manfred over right here. Fifi Manfred on TikTok. Every social media. Um, it's just Fifi Manfred. And thank you very much for choosing me. And let me want everything for you. A lot of things to unpack for you. You see, goal for any list to be out to have on team. And in that list is the list of young, likely top players in the next few years to come. I'll go through all of that for you. And then first of all, I'll tell you the funny thing Chelsea are trying to do. I think it's unfair to this player. This Chelsea player has not been treated fair at all. And, and I'll delve into the analysis. I'll talk exactly why it's unfair to him. They were not putting a lot of the effort. But this person is being forced, forced literally, to be able to stay at Chelsea Football Club. And that's exactly why I'm here. My name is Ifi Manfred. Guys, see, it's an parity just for the content to grow, for the channel to grow. So you get the best from me as well. So that's motivating to me. I entreat you, do what subscribe to the channel, please. Do pause the video, subscribe to the channel, turn on notification. I'm not supposed to be doing this. Of course, turn on notification also, and then do choose all. My name is Sifi Manfred. This is Sifi Manfred on YouTube. There's a lot of things to unpack for you. I'll talk about all of those things, uh, starting with everything that's going on at Chelsea Football Club. Then, of course, I get into the next conversation for you about Go.com putting up a list of players that I think I disagree largely with. We'll do the analysis. But first of all, let's start with this. So... Team talk, and then um, a lot of the British outlets are reporting something which I find very unfair and unusual to Conor Gallagher. Now, I'm sure say will be at it. Say a lot of the reports that have come is that if Chelsea person will keep it Conor Gallagher, what they have to do, they say they need to make sure say they sell other players around him. We know, also know say in January, teams which is a Torian most for any idea they came to see Conor Gallagher, he spoke to his interacts, they wanted to. He priced him away from that. Chelsea said that it is 15 million. And I remember, say, if you have somebody that has been watching Fifi Manfred on YouTube here, yeah, one of the things that they be making kind of sense for Chelsea and the new owners, it is going to be easy deal for them. Then they don't have a problem selling Conor Gallagher. Why? Because or representing what we call in financial terms in football, pure profit. Now, why is it pure profit? Let me explain to you. Pure nature, say, when you say other players not Chelsea, go go to man. Say so, go to play and see their car have it. Go sign in four years. Sir. You amortize the fee over the four years. In the end, fancy you about two years. Sir. So or qua, we have our deductions the fee. Now, see can have the cotton wash amortization. Now, in what year? Because okay, cotton have been in for so see we book a see. For players, the features academy will come on. Cotton, there is no amortization. There is no deduction. There is no addition. It is straight up profit. It is a choice here. Cotton can go like for fifty million. It is fifty million more to Chelsea's books. It helps them stand in a physical, very good state for um, against any FFP that will be thrown against them. And we all know that FFP in common is hanging around Chelsea Kakra and they will find every possible way, engineer ways, to find the best way to get money around them. It's the reason why they want to say play this is a Victor Osimemo, Nico Williams, more. yes, they may want to come to Chelsea, but they may not be able to pay the monies that Paris Saint Germain will pay. They may not be able to pay the monies that Real Madrid will pay. They may not be able to pay the money that other teams are like, top clubs will pay out on them. So that's it. And it's also the reason why I tell CIA a performance enhancing clause in all of these players. And they are, um, our the increase in the salary will be tied to the success of the club. As in, we can qualify for what champions they sign your manner, then players will get good money. That's the thing. Now, let's come to the substantive story. Right? Even before the substantive story, this is what you need to understand. If you are listening to me, now I need to, to let me know in the comment section. Do you think second or like this season doesn't deserve to wear the Chelsea jersey? I know there are a lot of you that will say yes, that he deserves to wear the Chelsea jersey. Last season, you didn't think so. Because Kone has improved every facet of the game. We have been doing Kone. Yeah, Kone has improved largely. First of all, Kono, no, yet this technical. He was never technical. And earlier on in that, later on in the analysis, I'll tell you the importance of the various number 10s that Chelsea were and why it is the best in terms of the future as, as the Martin set of players are on. So stick and stay. Now, Connor wasn't this technical. Connor was just an aggressor running around every time, spoiling balls. 
But this season, his technical ability has improved. Maybe because he realizes Chelsea are some of the best expensive midfielders around him, and that needs to increase his quality. I remember when Mauricio Pochettino was playing him as a 10, it was a little bit worrying because why are you playing Conor Gallagher as a 10? Who never really played as a 10? It was just a box crasher at um, West Brom United, any um, Crystal Palace. So why are you playing him as a 10? But as a 10, he has been excellent. His energy levels are very high. Somebody who embodies everything Chelsea. He's from the Chelsea Academy, of course. He has said that he wants to play for Chelsea. Now, what Chelsea are saying, they're in negotiations with Conor Gallagher. But now Chelsea can say, Second bit in that's not Chelsea. Yes, or you say, so ten salary demands. No, so already how much is Connor taking? Connor said, taking more than seventy thousand. Most of them boys on the academy you know, don't take more than seventy thousand. Who buy more seventy thousand around normal money? These are boys that just come from Man City Academy, Chelsea Academy, seventy thousand normal money. So they are not taking so much. I say the money hundred thousand, they are going over hundred and ten. Rahim Sterling, Rahim Sterling, maybe three hundred and twenty-five or thereabouts. Between 200, 250 to 325, Raheem Sterling. But of course, because he has experience, we are only in negotiations that he's going to come from the high end. But I think that given what Conor Gallagher is giving to the team, it is on the head of to want him to reduce the salary demand. At least some 110 like Thiago Silva, up to 150. Kono deserves that money. And again, because of Sir Chelsea, one of the things that also helps with FFP is that so who will play that's a salary and that's a wage system of front company. That one even helps more because which are less wages that means that there is less adverse effect on your finances at the end of the season. Because of course wages will be paid every week or every month, anyhow you want to put at it. So it's important. And that's the reason why Connor is being asked to reduce his wages. But I think it's unfair. I really do think that it's unfair. Yes, he has to reduce it, but it shouldn't be less than hundred thousand. It really should not be less than 100,000. And I think the corner is a player that Chelsea ought to have. And that will dovetail into my next analysis. But first of all, even before I go into my, my, my next analysis now on, there's something I want to tell you. I think the 100,000, like I said, 250, is perfect for someone like Conor Gallagher. He's a squad player. Can you choose a make a move can play as a number 10. We have a move that can play as a number 10. So yes, he is going to be a squad player. He's going to be an Arsenal for tactical and top six games. But but really, 100,000 150 should be enough. If you don't agree with me, let me know in the comment section. If you don't, let me know in the comment section. Again, Mr. Safi Noir Journey, and make sure say, you will share the content on every group you are one. Manchester United group, you have Manchester United content here for you, and Chelsea content for you, Manchester City content for you. Of course, Chelsea and I also, but there's a lot more. Bartha, of course, there's also Real Madrid content, Emma Wahasi. So stick and stay, and then share all the content, and let us see exactly what you want to see in there so again you see if you look at this whole Conor Gallagher situation now they just have to see Raheem Sterling there you, you become sad because it's unfair but even before I told you the importance of Conor Gallagher and why Chelsea has the best number 10s I will be seeing that Chelsea has the best number 10s I will be seeing that for the next 10 years for the next 10 years, the number 10 position, Chelsea has the best players for the next 10 years. And I'm about to tell you why. But before I do that, let me just talk about this for one. Now, goal for NXG in 2024, 2024, the next generation 2024, best 50 has arrived. And uh, the list of players on where the next generation best players are good things that they are going to come um, into to play world football. Now, usually, what goal does is that they bring out a list, they have a lot of experts on the shape, then they put together these boys on their top quality in terms of um, every facet of the game, uh, in terms of um, the various departments of the game. Now, this is exactly what we want to see. In the last few years, guys, we said you, Bellingham, Rodrigo Goals, Jordan Sancho, um, Lena Lim, or the, or the above, Munir Diabem, uh, covering about five continents and representing 17 different countries. The 2024 next generation list is truly global and featuring established senior internationals and all of that. First of all, A. Joe Bellingham, number 58. Um, of course, that's the brother of Joe Bellingham. Um, I don't see how good Joe is. I've not watched him so much. There is Nestor Arakundi, Obama Adli, um, Ewo Australia. There is Benjamin Kremachi. Um, there is CV Naipan. There is, of course, Augustin Ribeiro. Most of these players are young, young players. Um, Julian Rijkoff. Um, there is, of course, Asani Diao, 
there is Archie Gray, there is of course Julian Jamaville for Dortmund, top player Ethan Waneri for Arsenal, Pari Brennan for Dortmund, uh, Ben Duarte for Liverpool, there is Franco Mastatuono, uh, Marco Gui, there is obviously George Ilankena, there is Paul Werner, that will team with him, um, Isaac Badabi, Elise Ben Shiga, um, there is also Sinyoni Pafundi, there is Jack Henselwood for Brighton, that's a top quality player, one of the very ones that I have watched and I believe is a top quality player. So the list goes on and on and on and on and on and on and on. In there, there is Real Madrid football player or by a friend Estavio Medin Ewo. He's a top player from Palmeiras that's going to join Real Madrid. There's also um, a player from Senegal that's called Amara Diof, top player from Generation Foot. He's a genuine phenomenon. Amara Diof has already made a full Senegal debut at the age of 15, becoming African nation's youngest ever player in the process. The international ball came off the back of a forward breaking Victor Shima record at the most goals in a single and a 17 African um, Africa Cup of Nations 2023 and he looks set to follow the Napoli superstar at the very top. Amara Diop, a top player uh, in there as well. Uh, I'm looking at some of the names that you know, of course, I mentioned a star view. And the only thing is that I'm just not seeing anybody from the Chelsea Academy. And I've seen Paul Kobasi in the top 17, Gabriel Mascado. Boy, and Chelsea, Penny, and Rafi Chelsea. Uh, could he come to Chelsea, going to Paris Saint Germain? Gabriel Mascaro, one of the top central midfielder. Kendry Paye, finally, a Chelsea boy is in. Kendry Paye, top, 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 yeah, for Chelsea. Kendry Paye, um, he's been bought from Independent, Independiente de la Ville, um, exactly where Abrantia referred him. Uh, Moises Caicedo, no, but for Ecuador. Definitely, he looks like some of the boys that's going to take over the world. And let me read exactly what Go says about it. Chelsea have shown they are not afraid to spend big to um, uh, to acquire some of the best superstars in the world. Kendrick Pye is one of them. 16-year-old top player. Um, Ronnie Berardi, also for FC Cup in England. He's one player Chelsea are also looking at in terms of the wingers now. Um, Joel Hato, Antonio Musa. There is Eleni Yoro, also a top centre-back that Chelsea are looking at in terms of the French league on and so on. He's an extraordinary centre back, very athletic power at Chelsea and so Ashen. So these are some of the top players in the from Gold. Wine Zaire Emery, top player, Hendrik from Palmeiras, top player, um, Lamin Dawal, a eh, number one on the list, then number second, a eh, Hendrik El Hono for who is possibly going to play for Real Madrid. Uh, Warren Zaire Emery, Matthias Tell for Bayern Munition. Of course there is other Gule and so you know, Victor Roque from Barcelona. Then there's Kobe Mainu, Manchester United, um, Kenan Veledet, and so on for Juventus. And then there's also Claudio Echeverri, he is from River Plate, Eva Manchester City. Claudio Echeverri, I want to talk The top 10 is exciting. Players like Claudio Echeverri, players like Kondri Paye, players like Yoni Loro, players like Pau Tori, players um, like Antonio Musa, players like Ami Lawal. So that's the quality they are going to get from there in terms of set of players that are going to come through to play for the top teams at the world Europe. Now, you see, the Euros is coming. If there's a Euros nearby, definitely every conversation is going to be about the national teams. But there's something that Jacques Cancelo has said that I think that it's going to be the topic of the conversation throughout from now to the Euros. Jacques Cancelo said the peak of a footballer's career is between it is 25 to 32. I don't know if he was taking a dig at Cristiano Ronaldo. But of course, everybody in that Portuguese national team believes that maybe but Ronaldo has run this race. Maybe he's going to be the hindrance to them winning anything. Uh, because if you have a team with Cristiano Ronaldo, obviously you'll be pressed to get him to play. Does Roberto Mancini have the balls to keep Cristiano Ronaldo on the bench? Anna? Or is it just going to be one of those things where you look at a player a bit and say, Cristiano Ronaldo, you just want to play him in a game and maybe he's going to um, imbalance the team at a certain point in time. Obviously, you don't want to imbalance your team. You want to make sure your team is very balanced. Especially when you're playing in the Euros. Uh, most teams playing there are very, very quality, top draw staff in the course of the world. What do you want for your team? Do you want to make sure say, they're in a good shape in by imbalancing them? But this is a thing that is going to bring a huge issue to the Portuguese national team. Now, so my final conversation and i'm sure you love it see i'm saying this and i'm saying it again forget romeo forget kobe Mano, 
for once. Forget other goal for once. When Chelsea gets Romeo Lavia, eh, that team is going to transform. And I've said this several times. I said this same thing when I was talking about the boy in Chelsea called Kani Chukwemeka. There is a role in football you're in the central incisor. The kind of technically gifted players that can tear apart a low block. No matter how good that low block is. Se Ube Kaya, when Chelsea began this season, one of the most difficult games on Oboe Power was a low traps. It's the brand for the more Everton, more West Ham, more on the board Chelsea. They sit very compact and then they prevent Chelsea from getting spaces to play to them. Now, obviously, if you don't have a central inside, and how you say you try to load overload the wings now, then but it's easy because who full back with say Sofian Kufal that West Ham team. What they do is that they close you down and then they add their, their DM to come and add up with you. So it becomes a 2v1 from wide areas. Ubenya Kufal, Nishu Shek, 2v1 on Malagusto or on Noni Maruki. They are literally toothless because numerical advantage you know, on Omo they bring Gerard Brothel on the wings, man. It's difficult for you to deal with them. Now, that is the, the need for a central incisor in every game. Now, what should Chelsea number 10, sir? Can you go and make a just return? And that goal that he scored between himself and Cole Power is a clinical example of the role of a central incisor in the ball carrying ability, nimble footedness, close control, combination play with the inside number 10 who occupies the half space, and then to get into space. Uh, yeah, a, 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 a chain of process that you just can't stop it. Until you start it, or not start it, pick a ball at the bank. You want to draw players to himself, then create that intent, create space or passing ball in terms of the, the, the combination play with the inside player. Now, then he will also keep on the run. He doesn't have to stop the run because if he stops the run, the move has sports. He has to go on with the run, not at a cost one, and then he ends up scoring, has the finishing ability to do the job. And that's exactly what you want. I've said it several times. That's all person winning English in Yami. All person will qualify in the competition. You need the three forms of attacks controlled, aerial, and then the sporadic, or the one that runs the channels. It just gets these players together. Then now that's it. Now that is just Kani Chikwemeka. Now there is Kono Galaga, who is going to be another number 10. He is excellent and the perfect pick fits like a glove to play against teams that are in the top 10 that are going to press you. That you need to press, that you want to be aggressive against, that you have to chase, you want to win second balls against, you want a lot of energy, you want to inject space. Corner is the man. And he has even improved his technical ability. Indeed, so Oko Akobo team is a Manchester City. Not only Manchester City very press, Oko Akobo Arsenal is Arsenal very pressing. But you want a certain skill set, a certain profile from a midfielder. You know that first of all, you get this things from this boy that is called Kono Galaga. Because one, Kono's skill set helps him to press. He is a bundle of energy to lead the press and then win the ball for it. So against the big boys, Kono becomes the guy. When you play against the low bottom teams, you play Kani Chukwemeka. Now, Kopama has proven that he can combine with all of these two other number 10s. Now, there is an exceptional number 10 that I've also seen in recent times, and it is the boy called Mihailo Modric. Why? So, watch Mihailo Modric. In recent times, if he's playing against any team that is daring enough, not the top teams, but daring enough to leave spaces in behind. Mihailo is the man. And it is clear in that game that he played against Leicester City, where he played centrally. It's been two games where Mihailo Modric has been playing centrally. Why? Anytime he comes, because he's a very good close control player, because he's constantly on the run, because he is now coming inside and more and going to get on the ball, he's a good dribbler. What that does is that Leicester City more will leave him more team to come and press you very hard. And they leave space in behind him. The boy called Mihalo Modric is the boy that can break them apart. So Chelsea essentially has everything in the number 10 role. And it's it's, it's the reason why, in my opinion, eh, there is no need for them to sell Gordon Galaga. Find a way and sell Nathaniel Chaloba and all of those boys. But I watch Chaloba. Man. For almost three teams, you don't need to sell Gordon Galaga. Stick and stay. Get things done. Get the best out of these boys and watch Chelsea team. Man. Put them together. Build a formidable unit, a formidable unit in a sense that say more, more born and more born. Find exactly who fits what in the games that work. Now I put this together and I want to read it to you. Chelsea have tried Conor Gallagher, Palmer, Modric as a number 10 so far. And to be fair, all of them have has specific attributes. And I, that's exactly what I said. Gallagher playing as a 10 can lead a pressing game. He has limited unlimited energy. That's 
have a long range of shots in him, of course, to break a low block and such. Want to shoot. Where he lacks is a bit of creativity, though, as compared to the rest of the players, and that's true. Um, and the technical ability compared to the rest of the players, that's true, especially against a low block. He also doesn't like to carry the ball and is rather more into short passes. But other than that, he stop not, never stops working and it always gives 100%. Great. That's spot on on Conor Gallagher. And Cole Palmer, I believe, could be more molded into a 10. He starts on the right hand side, comes inside. In my opinion, he's an inside winger. That can also be a 10 once he's occupying a house space. But why would he want to change his position when he's doing well at right wing? Moreover, he is also. He also likes to cut in on the left foot in that half space and shoot from there and find a teammate. It's excellent. That's opening up the low blocks in the process. I believe Cole should have be left alone on the right. Incredible talent. Of course, we all agree with him. Now, there is the boy that they call Mihailo Modric. I think it's only been a couple of games, in my opinion. But anyone that can see by now that Ukrainian prefers to play central instead of having the touch line. Modric has got a lot of attributes. He's quicker. Um, the enlightenment is arrogance in him that you need to be impossible passes and then sometimes um, as an opposition all you can do is to foul him and stop him in his tracks not to mention his jewelry ability powerful shot where Modric likes the bit of off the ball stuff and he's a good pre he's not as good presser as Conor Gallagher I think I agree with that and and even close Poch probably feels more safe and solid with Conor Gallagher because he knows what he's going to get from him nevertheless if Modric either gets to drop defense um, develops the defensive part of the game but keeps getting better with offensive then obviously you know that he has a place in it. Then finally my man, Kani Chuku and Mecca. If you remember, Kani is the first choice number 10 and he scored a central incisor and I think that he should have been the man from preseason until he got injured. Why? Because of his one touch game, his ball carrying ability, his movement and then the creativity that he has in him in that quality. And I think that he's a player that's going to play well in that regard. Now because of that one touch gameplay and the creativity, people forget that Kani Chukwemeka is the dynamic central incisor that Chelsea have been waiting for. The third man runs, or what we call the third man uh, run, uh, the deep runs, and the give and goes, the ball striking, and the toe footedness. The frame to also hold that play because if you have Kani Chukwemeka as a number 10, they knew they are going to have Nicolas Jackson and Kani Chukwemeka both to hold that play, the give and goes, and everything. And then he's a top player. He's also a very good player defensively. Chelsea are really stuck and spot for choice in everything that they want to do uh, from now to the next 10 years and the number 10 row. Guys, it's been a long 22 whole minutes. Thank you very much. If you've been here, of course, thank you. Subscribe to the channel, turn on notification. I'm obviously going to see you. Take care of yourselves. Bye-bye.